types. Number one, what is it? You mentioned it. It is the power of God for salvation for everyone. Six billion people in the world can have this power of salvation if they believe. That's the good news that drove Paul, and that's the good news that should drive each one of us. It can save the person there and there and in the Philippines, in India, in Africa, in South America, the power of the good news to save them is available through the gospel. What, what do people need to be saved from? Death, eternal death, judgment, eternal, the wrath of, wrath of God. And we'll see that as God declares this wrath of God on sinful men. Because God is a holy God, perfect. He cannot associate himself with sin. So God has to judge. And how many people have sinned? Everyone. And everyone needs to be saved from that wrath of God that is eternal. That is what salvation is. What verse in Romans can we cite for this truth? Anybody? Anybody good with memorization? With, with, what, what, what verse in Romans that talks about uh, salvation? Romans 6.23, I'd like to suggest to you. It says what? For the wages of sin is death, eternal death, eternal separation from God, and it is judgment. God talks about it because that's where the devil is going to be. And we are all sinners. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Have you received this gift from God? What's the first thing that we need to put on as part of the full armor of God? What's the first thing we need to put on? The belt of truth. What did I drop? My belt? No. <laughs> I better put it back on. <laughs> we need to put on the belt of truth, which is Jesus Christ himself. God has given you the belt of truth, which gives you salvation. Have you received it? And more importantly, have you put it on? That's why it's important to know the full armor of God. It starts with your affirmation of your belief in Jesus Christ, that you know the truth, that you know that you are saved, and then he provides even the helmet of salvation to tell yourself that I belong to Jesus Christ. If you've never received this gift, use communion today to receive Jesus Christ, the good news that he died for your sins so that you can be saved from eternal death. This is important stuff because it, it's eternal. There's eternal significance in your decision about Jesus Christ as you look at communion today. So that's the first thing. Uh, the gospel is the power for salvation from death, from hell, to glory in eternity with God. That's the power of the gospel for everyone who believes. You have to believe and receive. It's not, it's not, Jesus died for the whole world, yes, but whoever believes are saved. You need to realize this gift. You need to put on the belt of truth if you really want to be saved. The second thing we can note about what the gospel does from Romans 1, 16 to 17 is this. It says, a righteousness from God is revealed. A righteousness. If you're a sinner and God is a holy God, you're separated from God. You cannot be right with God. But now because of the gospel, you can now be right with God and you can live with God. And God is saying, come on, I want to be with you. You are now right. That's what righteous means. Briefly now turn to uh, Romans 3, real quick. Uh, Romans 3, 21 to 24. Very uh, familiar passage to most of you. Uh, Romans 3, 21. But now a righteousness from God apart from the law, all of these things that is supposed to be done, has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. 
this righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. What does it mean to be righteous? Being righteous with God means God no longer sees our sins. Yes, you and I are sinners. But because of our belief in what Jesus did, God doesn't see those sins anymore. Now, there are consequences to sin, even though you're a Christian. Never forget that. Because God is calling you to repent and to grow. If you don't, then there are consequences. But if you believe in Jesus Christ and what he did, you become righteous. God doesn't see your sins anymore because Jesus died for them. Believers of Jesus Christ have been justified. Legally, you have been cleared of all the wrongs that you've committed yesterday, today, and forever as you continue to believe in Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power for salvation. It is the power to give us righteousness. Believers of Jesus Christ are made right with God. This is not just good news. It is great news for us that we can be right with God. You know your lives. You, I know my life. I've messed up many times. But God is saying, Jesus died for them. You are right in my sight. And I want you to be with me. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ that saves us and makes us righteous. As Christians, what are we to put on after the belt of truth? What's the second thing? The second B. Breastplate of righteousness. <laughs> See how it all ties in together? It's the word of God. It cannot conflict itself, be in conflict. We are to put on the breastplate of righteousness. In other words, check your heart in light of the gospel, in light of Jesus Christ. Put on the belt of truth, this is Jesus Christ. Believe in him, understand him, and then check your heart. Are there sins still there? Not confess to him. Put on the belt of righteousness. We are to do this on a daily basis, constantly, never to take him off. Now, let's wrap up here. Because of this gospel and what it does, the life of the Apostle Paul was completely changed. What excited the Apostle Paul's life was the gospel, the good news. What should we be excited about in our lives? Going back to the initial question. Sure, we should be excited about our family, new babies, our new friends, the, the fun that we can have. Those are all exciting, even our jobs or our hobbies and even entertainment or basketball I can be excited about. But watch out. We can be so excited about those things that we lose our excitement about the greatest news that we have, which is the gospel of Christ. So here's the challenge for us today. Am I truly excited about the gospel that it drives my life, or does my life revolve around something else? Am I truly excited about the good news of Jesus Christ that it drives my life in everything that I do or is my life revolving around my hobby or my job or my family and friends or my entertainment? That's the challenge for you and me today right here in America. It was true for Paul. It was true for the Romans. We need to think is the gospel of Jesus Christ really good news? Is it really good news to you? Is it really good news to me? It is not only good news, it is great news, which brings us to eternal life in heaven. Shouldn't this gospel be our MO in life? Shouldn't it drive us? Because it is fantastic eternal news. Here's the closing thought. If I really believe in what the gospel of Jesus Christ can do in my life, shouldn't I be as compelled as the Apostle Paul to live a life for Christ? 